What's going on guys, Tony Maritato here. I wanna talk about the claim submission, the billing, collections, the entire process. So you guys know I teach a course, Zero to Paid Medicare Billing, and my goal for the course is to take new providers, new to Medicare, and walk them through the entire process, right? Everything from understanding Medicare, understanding how to contract and connect with Medicare, how to create a claim, how to admit a new patient, all of it, documentation, payment posting, and then a little bit about marketing at the end. Because if you don't get patients, it doesn't matter how well you understand Medicare. But I realized after a post in David Bailiff's group, Uncaged Clinicians, that the process could really be broken down in different ways. And not every clinician needs to do their own billing in-house. So I created a four-step kind of process to break up the billing cycle so that you might decide, hey, I want control of step one and step two. I want to outsource step three and hire a consultant for step four. So let me give you my kind of four step, four part process. So number one is the actual filing, claim creation and filing. This is something that I think any clinician at any point in the game absolutely can do in-house. The reality is when you get a new patient referral, you're going to admit that patient into some sort of accounting or billing software anyway. You're going to create your charges. You're going to document. You're going to do all of that stuff. The actual part of creating the claim and filing the claim, whether it's electronically through an EMR, electronically through a clearinghouse, electronically through a Mac portal, or on paper, it's pretty much just pressing a button. And I would say that you're doing 95% of the labor in the patient care, in running your practice anyway. So it doesn't make sense to outsource the actual claim creation and claim submission, the filing. Part number two is the follow-up. Now this is where we start to get into a little bit of the weeds. This is where clinicians don't have the confidence, don't have the time, don't have the resources to know how to even follow up. But what I would say is, if you're not incentivized to follow up on your own claims, there's little chance that a billing company is going to be incentivized to do it for a fraction of the cost, right? So if you're paying a billing company 7% of total collections, they're incentivized with $7 to follow up on a claim that's probably going to take them 20, 30, 40 minutes. If they don't do it, they lose 7 bucks. If you don't do it, you lose 97 bucks, assuming we're talking about a $100 reimbursement. So I think you have the incentive to follow up on those claims. What you don't have is the knowledge on how to follow up. But that would be something that potentially you could look at you know, if you're going to bring in any kind of in-house staff or employees, an administrative assistant, somebody who's going to handle the scheduling, the patient admissions, all of that kind of stuff, following up on claims might be something you keep in-house. And it certainly should not be something that takes up more than 3% of your total claim workload. Most of your claims should be processed without a hitch, especially if you're talking about Medicare Part B. The third part in the process is correcting mistakes. This is something that I think we should do and learn how to do and understand before we outsource it. But I'll give you a couple examples. And these are silly mistakes. They're always silly mistakes. Either the discipline modifier wasn't placed on the claim. So GP for physical therapy, GO for occupational therapy, GN for speech language pathology. Somebody did not put the discipline modifier on the claim, the claim got kicked back. The claim passed the, right now it's 2021, so the claim went in excess of the financial threshold for the year. And so you did not place the KX modifier on the line item, it was not paid or was not paid in full. And now somebody needs to correct that mistake, reopen the claim, add the KX modifier. Maybe a 59 modifier was missing or some other problem. Maybe the uh, member subscriber ID, there was an L that looked like a 1 and it was an incorrect digit entered into the medical record. These are the kinds of technical mistakes, little mistakes that get kicked out from Medicare or other third-party payers that really don't take an expert to correct.
Once you understand how to correct, once you understand the reason code behind the mistake and how to fix it, you never make that mistake again. So these are one-time fixes that should go into your procedures and policies manual so that these mistakes never happen again. The real value and the thing that I would tell you to consider outsourcing if you're going to outsource anything would be the education and the consulting portion. So part number four updating your systems. You know, let's say you find a problem. Let's say something changes. Something that was working for the last two or three years all of a sudden isn't working. This is where I would encourage you to go out, hire a consultant, whether it be a billing specialist like Heidi or a compliance expert like Nancy or somebody who's in the trenches like Rick or myself. Hire an expert in the specific problem area to help you work through what is going on, understand if, if regulations have changed and you missed the notice, and then how to update your systems, procedures, policies so that it's not a problem moving forward. You know, now any step in the four step process can be outsourced. Yes, you can hire an administrative assistant or outsource it to do claim generation and production. You can um, hire somebody to figure out the problem and fix the claim. Each one of these steps is gonna have different values, right? So if you're paying somebody for data entry, that's gonna be a very different value than if you're paying somebody to spend time on a phone, follow up on a claim, see what went wrong, and help you update your policy so that that mistake never happens again. But I just, I want you to understand that just because everybody else is outsourcing the entire process and everybody else is giving up 7% of total revenue, which to me is just a flawed model, it doesn't mean you have to do what everybody else is doing. I think in a scenario where you hire a biller as a consultant, you pay them on an hourly basis or you have a retainer in place, you get far greater value, the biller receives far greater revenue, and both sides come out way ahead in the process. So guys, if you think I'm just totally off base, let me know. If you think I'm dead on, let me know. Post your replies in the comments below this video. Give the video a thumbs up so we share this video with other therapists who haven't heard this kind of information. And as always, keep sending me your questions. You guys are giving me the best video content ideas. I thank you for it. I'll catch you next time.